And in business, President Mohamed Buhari on Tuesday told the Apex Bank not to give a cent to anybody to import food into the country with hopes that there would be steady improvement in agricultural production and attainment of full food security. The president further said some states like Kebi, Ogun, Lagos, Jigawa, Eboing and Kano had already taken advantage of the federal government's policy on agriculture with huge returns in rice farming. I have in the studio with me Yinka Ade Ademu Wagun from United Capital, who would be addressing this particular issue with us. Thank yeah, you very much for joining Mary. me. Good afternoon. All right. Regarding the president's directive, what is your thought, what would be the implication on the agricultural output moving forward? So, yeah, when we heard this news, uh, it was after we returned from the Salah holiday, and the initial reaction was, this is the current narrative that the CBN has been doing. If you remember, we had a 41 item that have been banned, yes. excluded from FX, mm -hmm. and recently CBN was mulling, um, including milk into that category also. Now President Wari is talking about the old food classification. So the initial reaction is more like, this is a continuation of the narrative we've been seeing in the past. Okay. But the question is, how impactful is this um, policies that we've been talking about? We don't think it is quite, it's going to be quite impactful on FX, mm -hmm. because looking at the total imports in terms of food or agricultural products, it only constitutes about 6% of our imports. Yes. So the majority of our imports is oil, which refined oil, then we also import manufactured goods, about 60% of the import. So if you're talking about excluding all the food and you're talking about food security, so mm. it's, it's actually not gelling together. So mm. that's our own initial reaction to this news. Mm. All right, but then uh, let's take a look at some of the companies we have here in Nigeria need agricultural produce for Correct. whatever they are producing. Right? Do, you, do you think this would bring about more backward integration and yeah. then, you know, rather than importing these things okay. that Correct. starts Correct. to Correct. produce here? So before now, you know, the narrative from the CBN and the federal government is they want to promote agriculture. Yes. And most of this firm, after getting their hands burned back in 2016, 2017, after as a result the of the devaluation, mm -hmm. the recession, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they've, they've been that narrative where all the consumer goods firm are doing the backward integration. Mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they are establishing um, um, what's Ingenious called agricultural ways. plantations mm -hmm. here in mm -hmm. Nigeria. So it's not going to actually stimulate, but it's good, it's positive for them. They will mm. Probably it's a good incentive for them, but mm. uh, for, for the overall economy at large, we don't think this is the way to go. Do we see this boosting our effects in any way? As I said earlier, this is just constituting about 6%. So if you look at the numbers, it's about $600 million. Our reserve is about $44.5 billion. So, so that's kind of marginal. So the, mm. the impact is not going to be that... Um, huge as as it's been muted all around. Mm -hmm. But the problem there is, can we stop importation of food? Is absolutely no. Because what this is going to encourage is smuggling. Because here we've been milling the fact that rice um, with the, 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 yes. the policy is actually right. But yeah, if you look at the data, if you look at Benel, if you look at Togo, the why importation decreased in Nigeria, it's increased over there. And they've been smuggling it into the country. Mm, so mm, mm. this will probably promote smuggling. And if smuggling increases, then you're likely going to see pressure on food prices. Uh, inflation was released today. So you, you'll probably see all of this mm. happening all around. Like, it will add pressures to food prices. Mm. So, basically. Yeah, and then you did mention something about inflation yeah, reports, which correct. was just released today. We today. saw that um, in terms of the consumer price index, the inflation increased by just 11.08% year on year in July 2019, correct. which is 0.14% lower when juxtaposed with the results in June 2019. Uh, did this meet analysts' expectations? Yeah, so from our own perspective, this is in line with expectation. We expected inflation rate to moderate because there was no pressure for food, no okay. pressure on the core inflation stability mm -hmm. happens to be. So th that was the same narrative that we saw after the, res um, the, the, the report was published today. So infl um, food inflation actually was the stimulant because okay. we saw it decline by about thir um, 13 bips, basis points, majorly. So um, this was due to the lack of pressure in that particular space. But now that we're entering into the plant um, harvest season okay. for, for, for the agriculture, the pressure points, probably that's a positive point for, for food inflation going forward, but okay. the pressure point is the festive season that we 
had during August, and you know, a lot of there was a rise in demand for um, goods, for cow, for mm. food. So that would probably add some pressure to inflation. So in terms of outlook for for August, in terms yes, of for yes. inflation, yeah. So we are seeing marginally a marginal drop also in in August by four basis points um, in inflation rates, and this is due to the fact that we're now entering into. Um, the harvest, harvest season, and this will boost supply. Though demand was, there was an upsurge in demand early in the month, but later in the month we expect the upsurge in, in, in supply to offset that. All right, we'll hold on with your thoughts for a bit. Okay. We'll take a quick break now. You're still watching News on the Hour on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for staying with us. I've been speaking with Inka Ademuagu of United Capital. Yes. Go, moving forward, we also saw the food sub index. It decreased by 13.39% uh, year on year from 13.56%. How does this align with the president's directive? Yeah, as I said earlier, you know, I was making mention of the fact that while importation of most of the banned items that have the CBN has earlier banned to, from mm. assessing efforts, uh, we've seen rise in imports in neighboring countries mm. and given our porous border they've been surge in smuggling into the country yes. in order to satisfy the massive demand don't forget our population is increasing at a rapid pace so we need to satisfy that demand so most of the demand are being satisfied by smuggling so what this means don't forget we also did african continental free trade agreement of where course. we have where we have agreed to open on 90 percent of our economy to other African nations. Mm. Now, with this, factoring all of this together, it means it becomes easier for our goods to even legally, now not mm. even smuggling, mm -hmm. legally mm -hmm. enter into our economy by neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. So which would um, increase the, 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 the food prices, it will, it will kind of add pressure to food inflation mm -hmm. at the moment. So mm -hmm. this directive does not align well with what the narrative that we have at the moment. At the, the narrative we have at the moment is moderation in food inflation due to no pressure, but this will probably, if this is implemented by the CBN, it will probably add pressure to the, to the food inflation sub-index. All right. So. To wrap this up, what percentage would you say at least this directive would help in terms of food production? So, uh, in terms of food production, if I'm to put percentage to it, I would say it is marginal. About mm. it's quite marginal because mm. this will probably add like three percent or four percent. Mm -hmm. So basically, so that the the major thing is oil for us because yeah. we keep importing refined oil. Now we have been looking to Dangote refinery for the to help the economy yes, in terms yes, of. Yes. So if that comes online, then we will see a drastic drop in our importation mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. refined oils. So basically, that's what the government needs to do at the moment. The government needs to align the policy directly, create structural um, um, infrastructures, reforms, yes. in, in reforms mm -hmm, to, to make mm -hmm. doing business in Nigeria possible. So those are the things we feel the government should concentrate more on at the moment. All right. Thank you very much for joining me in the studio. You're Thank welcome, you. Man.